being a Broadway performer is pretty cool. And a lot of hard work. Getting there is even harder. We're going to tell you all about it. I'm Adrian Walker. And I'm Austin Cook. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. Welcome to Broadway Banter on 32 Bar Cut. I'm Adrian Walker. I'm Austin Cook. And today we are talking about the pros and cons of being a union actor. Hey, which we both are. Yes. I mean, everybody knows Adrian is, but some people don't know that I am too. Austin is also a union actor. He joined the union before me, at least two years before I did. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's crazy. We're both in two unions. So I'm in Actors' Equity and the AFM uh, Federation of Musicians and Local 802 in Broadway. And... You are also in. I am in Actors' Equity, but also SAG-AFTRA, the film, TV, film, and radio union. So, Yeah, so we've yeah. got a lot of union experience here, um, and we have a lot to talk about today. And uh, I hope this video is informative um, for not only uh, those of you who are non-union looking to be union, maybe mm -hmm. you're EMC and want to know more about what we think about being union, some of the pros and cons, but also those that are in the union. We want to hear yeah. what your thoughts are, your experiences, and um, yeah, because there is a lot of controversy around our union right now, Actors Equity Union. And so we'd love to open up the, the forum to hear your thoughts on on reform or, you know, what can be done and what shouldn't be done. So, yeah, we'll I got a question the other day um, from someone asking, you know, about our format and why we do it, why it's called Broadway Banter and why we do what we do. Oh, you did? And I think the important thing to talk about mm -hmm. is that the reason we don't have edits and you don't see like jump cuts where I'm like on this is because we want this to be us. Yeah. So what you're seeing is what we think in its raw form. Unedited. Unedited. <laughs> we do that on purpose because we want this show to feel feel different and less like uh, gloss, glossy and polished yeah. than most Broadway is. It's kind of like, this is my version of me and I'm this way. And we want it to kind of be, we're just ourselves here. We're yeah. just talking to you. This is what we think. And uh, that's part of the style of the show. And the same for 32 Bar Cut, the show where we bring on a special Broadway guest. Yeah. We don't make edits there, too, on purpose. No edits. It's just a conversation so that you can get to know the whole person mm -hmm. and you're not feeling like you're getting like a, just a highlight reel version, like Instagram version of somebody's life. You're getting yeah. more of a real person. So that's important to us. So thank you for the question. And that's why we do it in this format. Yeah. Of all the times that I've had to do interviews, I've always felt compelled to uh, say the right thing, especially when the interview is to promote a show. And so that's why it's our goal to make sure that when we speak to you and that when we bring someone on for 32 Bar Cut, the show, that we're bringing our authentic selves so that you're not just getting the uh, quote unquote uh politically correct answers and the best answers that will sell the show, but actually a real life version of what it is like to uh, be in this community and to be a professional actor and uh, the ups and downs of it. Yeah. Yeah. The good and the bad. Yeah. So first, what is the first pro of being in the union? I think it's obvious. Obviously the pay. The pay. <laughs> the pay is better. Um, will it be a livable wage? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on the market that you're in, but it will undoubtedly be better pay than union work, no matter the region you're in. Yeah. And I, I spoke to on Monday when we were talking about a non-union um, that I worked in equity houses as an equity member where I only made less than $200 a week. Yeah. So there are really low tiers of equity, yeah. but still there are benefits to even though it's really low pay, you still may be making more than your non-union counterparts yeah. because it's relative to the uh, tier of theater that you're working for. So just because you're union doesn't necessarily mean you're in the money. No. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not how it works. It's not how it works. Maybe potentially someday, but um, you will get the other perks of getting your breaks, getting your, uh, getting your lunch and dinner breaks, getting proper, um, accountability, someone to reach out for, reach out to if something is going wrong. So the next pro would be, so not only the pay, but also insurance. That's probably yeah. the next most like talked in about thing with mm -hmm. being in the union is the insurance, yeah. health insurance we're speaking to. So you'll be able to qualify for insurance, but it is based on the week's work. So this is kind of a pro and a little bit of a con, because if you're not working consistently at 
you know, equity work, now that you're a member of equity, then you will not qualify for insurance. But if you are working consistently, um, at least 12 weeks out the year. 12 weeks, 14 weeks, or 16 weeks are kind of the tiers between the plans. Yeah. Um, and I should, quick disclaimer, we are not... Um, we're not experts. We're not experts on this. Yeah. If you want the exact, all the, you know, make sure every all the information we're saying is correct, please head to the Actors' Equity website and check out all of these yes. um, exact numbers and exact details. I'm just giving you what's up to date when this video was uh, published. So 12 weeks, you have to work minimum to qualify for health insurance. This is a big issue yeah. right now, especially because of no this past qualifying. year. It's it's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. So you can imagine all the actors trying to just make their twelve weeks happen. I remember when I was in Chicago, this was a big issue for me because I couldn't. I, I was trying desperately just to find the twelve weeks. It got to the point in Chicago where you're calling artistic directors, just being like, "Look, please, is there some role, some show that I fit in this season that you can help me get my weeks?" Because people have families; they're mm -hmm. trying to raise a, a kid. There, I know people with kids who this is crucial this is their life and they were calling artistic directors just trying to find some role could they add a role at mm -hmm. the lowest tier equity contract just so they could get please their get their weeks mm -hmm. this is it's not the best way to do things but this is how it is in, in actors equity that's a whole nother video but yeah just know that it is a perk to be able to have access to insurance but it can also be a con because you have to qualify 12 weeks out of the year which is almost three months yeah and Actors' Equity has no way to ensure that you get work, right? So um, it, yes. it makes it, it in, in times like this, it's it's almost impossible. If not, it is impossible to make sure that you get those twelve weeks for for actors like myself um, and other actors on Broadway who have been working for a few years, just stacking up weeks. Even we are at risk of losing our insurance at this point for not having worked over 52 weeks. So. Which it signifies a, a broken system. A flaw. System. It's a flaw. We know why it is because if you're, if you're in Actors' Equity, say you're me, a musician who does both, and say I'm not working in Actors' Equity, I'm not ma making Actors' Equity money, contributing mm -hmm. to the health fund and all of that, and then I'm constantly drawing from the health fund, but I'm not working. That may not be fair to someone like Adrian who's paying in all this. This stuff is complicated. It's way over my head, okay? I didn't go to school for this kind of stuff, for social sciences. But the system is broken when you have something like this happening where all of a sudden you need no one can qualify for work. So how do we pay for our health insurance? What do we do? Yeah, so, so the system needs work. That is really the pro and con of it. Um, yeah, but you yen yen. will have access to insurance. And it is it is a pro that we are of a union where you have health insurance. And I'm grateful to the union because actors, uh, you know, 100 years ago who were mistreated and, and didn't have uh, what they needed. And that's why the union was formed. So, And I will say, too, that it is good health insurance yeah. um, for the individual. Mm -hmm. Once you add a family like onto that plan, it Not gets so really great. pricey, Not it gets so really expensive. But just for you as a member of equity, the insurance, once you qualify, is really good insurance. Yes. So that is definitely a pro. Definitely, definitely. Um, um, another pro. Another pro are the work conditions in the dressing rooms uh, will most likely be better. <laughs> yeah. You will have access to an equity cot for your uh, for your breaks. You can take a little rest in between breaks or during your tech week. Uh, you will have access to a shower. You will have gender... Uh, based dressing rooms, or maybe if you're a principal, you will qualify for your own dressing room uh, or a shared dressing room with another principal. So yeah. it'll be uh, definitely better than uh, sharing a shower curtain with <laughs> and behind a stairwell or something like that. Um, what else would it be right for work yeah, conditions? Just basically you get all those work conditions. So yeah. all of that stuff, whether Union it's breaks, breaks and all of that stuff, you, you have a specific book of rules for yeah. every contract um, with every house on all of these rules that they have to follow. Yeah. So if anything is broken, you report it to your union rep, the union rep deals with it. There's a system for all of this stuff. Yeah, and um, it can be anonymous. It's not like, ooh, you know, yeah. such and such told on whatever, whoever. Um, you'll also have uh, a deputy uh, in your cast 
that you can you can talk to if you have an issue and then they can be the liaison between um, you and speaking to uh, actors equity officials. On the first day of rehearsal as a union member, you'll have a meeting with your union rep. Yep. And you will vote at that time one of the cast members as a deputy. And the, the cast member who's the deputy is then in charge of dealing with all of that stuff. So all the reports. So if Adrian, I'm the deputy, Adrian has a problem. She comes to me and says, Austin, there's a problem with this rule. They're not doing what they're supposed to do in, the, in my dressing room or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the union rep. Then the union rep goes to the producer. So there's a whole system for keeping things anonymous and you know all, yeah. all of that. So the, that's definitely a pro for the union. In non-union world, you're on your own, you know? You yeah. Can, so. And you want to make, and, and that is, there's some trust there too, because I've, I've definitely worked at a union house when I was in Chicago where uh, the producers weren't really, you know, dotting their I's and crossing their T's and they were getting away with it. And yeah. um, the union actors in that house had to report them, but then somehow it got back to them what who the actor was. And so there needs to be a level of trust with equity. I don't know if they figured it out based on who they were treating a certain way and they mm -hmm. just knew who it was, but yeah. um, you do, they do have checks and balances because they have to answer to equity. So that is a good thing. It's not perfect. We're not saying it's perfect for sure. It's not a perfect system, but it definitely is better than the alternative, which is no system. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely, it's still a pro. Another pro I think, um, would be uh, the legitimacy yeah. aspect of being equity. So when you when a producer, when a director uh, sees that you're equity, obviously there's that legitimizes you. Yeah. Because as we were saying before, as you were saying, it means that you do this professionally. It means that you do this professionally. It means that you understand the rules. You understand what it takes. That they can trust you on a certain level. That you're not green. It, that it just it says all of those things, whether they're true or not is up to the actor, but uh, showing that you are a union actor means that you ab you under have an understanding of what it means to be a pro professional actor. Um, yeah. So yeah, it does help. It can help uh, your resume to have that status. Yeah. Um, there's only a few other things I'd say for the pros before we get into the cons. I think a big one for me is the auditions. Uh, going into equity calls, going into ECCs and EPAs, um, equity course calls and um, equity principal auditions. So when you go into those calls as a non-union actor, you just have to wait until you get called. You may I have waited as long as six hours. I have also waited as long as to not get seen. And so um, you're really just... Uh, you're kind of setting yourself up for a long wait when you're a non-union actor. But when you're a union actor, you can make an appointment <laughs> and you can show up to your appointment time and be seen and leave. Also, when you're a union actor, if there are no more appointments available, you can show up, write your name on a list, and you will still go ahead of all the non-union actors in the room. Yeah. So, and if you're in part of the EMC program, there's also a, a tier for you as well that you'll go before a non-union actor, but you won't go in before a union actor. Yeah, the ability to access auditions and have appointments is prob yeah, probably the biggest because you spend most of your career auditioning. It's a big pro. <laughs> it's And you'll have access to the equity website. It used to be, and this is no longer the case, and I hate that this is the case because I was able to take advantage of this perk, but when I was non-union, I was still able to go on the equity website and look up auditions and just show up to them and wait and sign up as a non-union actor. That is no longer accessible to non-union union actors. The only way you can access auditions now on the equity website is to be a member of the union or in the EMC program. So unfortunately, that is no longer a thing. Maybe they will change it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And on the other side of the desk, I'll say as a quick sidebar, um, sitting in auditions as a music director or supervisor, the uh, when we do auditions for equity day uh, for principal auditions, the um, monitor will always come in and ask us, do we want to see non-union? And I can say that almost every time we say yes, and they'll put them at the end. You know, if we're out, if we're not, like, if, if we're done with appointments and we're just sitting there, of course we'll see non-union. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, if you crash these equity, that most of the time we'll say yes. There are some exceptions when we say no, and that's if we're particularly busy or if we know that 
we have the cast already in mind. Like, mm-hmm. we don't want to waste your time. So if you hear that they're not accepting non-union auditions, it's probably just saving your time, to be honest, because we already know that we have the cast we want. We're just doing the auditions because it's an equity-mandated audition, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So, um, which is another perk that brings me to another perk, is equity has rules with the producers of mandating auditions for shows. Yeah. So they are required to visit, for instance, Chicago, LA, New York, each search region. each region at certain times of the year. And the and the houses on Broadway shows or whatever are required to audition. Yeah. So that that is another perk because it just makes it, it makes um, you be seen. Yeah. And you may not see any fruits from that. But at least you get you get a chance to audition for a Telsey rep, or you get yeah. a chance to audition for a Ruben rep. So it it helps to at least get that chance to 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 feel what it's like to to audition. And sometimes they'll take an interest in you and and be considering you for something else in the future. Take down your credentials and stuff. I want to mention too a big pro, which is retirement and your pension. Mm-hmm. That you do get contributions when you're under an equity contract. Your employer, depending on your contract, may match or make contributions on your behalf uh, to your retirement. This is a big pro Mm -hmm. that not enough of us our age and younger talk about. Yeah. But you really need to be thinking about your retirement and uh, how you're going to do that. As non-union, it's fine if you're going to open up your own investment, open up your own account and start investing and doing that in your 20s, 30s. Do it by all means, but not enough people are thinking about that kind of proactive. Um, yeah. Uh, being Just proactive. taking advantage of it and, and making sure that you're set up because yes. um, acting is it's wonderful and it's a beautiful art form and a way to express yourself, but it is subjective and so there are going to be times when you're not working and as you get older those times may come more frequently and so it's just good to make sure that you're setting yourself up when you can when you have the work that you're putting in money into an account so that you can take care of yourself later because remember depending on what you do i Mm -hmm. mean if you're if you're a principal then sure, there are always kind of roles that even as you could be an older person in a principal role but if you're a dancer on broadway there's not a lot of older uh, senior dancers still working. They would require a retirement, you know, something to live off of after they've, you know, blown out their knees or whatever. Unless you transition into working in management or you transition into doing principal work or you transition into choreography, uh, the the, the trajectory for a dancer is just a little bit shorter than a straight actor or a a, a singer actor. Yes, so retirement. All that to say that a pro of equity is the um, retirement plan. And Mm -hmm. also, as another sidebar, you should be contributing in addition to that, matching. Yeah, matching. Doing employer matching and all that stuff. That's another uh, video. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Last pro is all of the extras, right? Yeah. All of the discounts. There's, you know, there's like discounts on car rentals. There's a federal credit union. It's a bit antiquated, though. You get all, yeah, the, the uh, credit union you yeah. get access to with better interest rates for credit cards or whatever. There's a lot of, you know, access to the Actors Fund, yep. which has helped so many people during this crazy time. Yep. Stuff like that. There's a lot of little benefits and all of perks. And that and you can also get involved in the union. If, uh, if and when you join the union, if there are some things you'd like to see change or you want to see more people like you represented within the union structure, you can run for an office and you can get involved. You can go to town hall meetings and make your voice known. So you can make changes to the union if there's anything that you think could make it better. Yeah, so before we get into the cons, we want to do uh, stay tuned to the end because we have a subscriber sh- shout out coming at the end we do, of we the do. video. But um, before we get into the cons, we just want to say, uh, have you visited our website, 32barcut.com? Because if you haven't, go check it out. It's really cool. It's a cool website. And we built it ourselves. So at least go over there and check out all the cool stuff we did with the website. When he says we built it, he's just being kind to me because honestly, Austin built the website. (laughs) And it is beautiful and amazing. And all I had to do was like come in and say, oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, can you change that a little bit? Oh, I like that. So the website, I will brag on the website because Austin built it. 
The website is amazing. It, it is an easy way to see everything that we have to offer on this platform. And um, we also have a comment section in that too. If there's anything, any uh, suggestions you have or any kind of topics you really want us to touch on, just go over to the website. It sends an email straight to us and uh, we'll be able to talk about your uh, your suggestion or your topic or anything. Or if you, if you just want to say, hey guys, good job. You can do that too. And if you want to subscribe at the website, you can choose a subscriber tier, which is really cheap. It's less than a cup of coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. no big deal, but you get access to the entire Curtain Call series, which is every episode is practically an hour long, close to it. And it's yeah. all of the, it's a whole nother conversation with all of our guest Broadway stars. Yeah. So that's been really popular. So you want to subscribe to that at the website and you get access to all that. Yeah. So the cons of being a union member, we could get in trouble for this. They might be listening. <laughs> oh, uh, whatever. They're happy to have our dues, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so the cons. Um, the, the first con and the most simplest is that when you join the union, that means all non-union work is out. I'm talking about even a little, yeah. a little reading for your friend. You yeah. cannot do it unless it is a union work and you have to be very vigilant about that um it is it is uh not only can you be penalized and ejected from the union for life you're also discrediting uh what it means to be a union actor when you do non-union work so you have to be you have to make sure that this is what you want for life because uh there really is no going back why is this a big problem? It's a problem if you go equity too soon in yeah. your career. If you go soon and then you start auditioning for jobs and you're like, I'm not getting any work, I'm not getting any work, but they, this house offered me the role of whatever in, uh, you know, in the Heights, say you want to be a Benny and in the Heights mm -hmm. or something. You can't do it. It's not equity. Yeah. You can't do it, but you would have got that role. But So that, that sim seems to be the problem is if you go equity too soon, and then you cut off all of these shows that you yeah. could have been a lead or a principal in. Um, that's definitely a con. You want to do it at the right time when it feels, when you are getting called in to equity houses more than you're getting called in to non-union houses, then you are probably reaching that sweet spot where it's time to consider switching over. Which brings me to the next con, which I, I'd love to speak to um, because it has to do with my union too, the music, the um um, musician union. Musicians union. Mm -hmm. I'm in both unions, equ equity and in uh, musicians union. But this, this, the big con is feeling like you're starting over. Mm. That's basically how I felt mm -hmm. because what happened in Chicago, I was not in the union, in the musicians union. So I was music directing, playing in shows, all of non-union houses, some equity houses, but in the, they didn't have a musician's contract. Yeah. So I was doing all these shows and becoming a, a music director in Chicago and building my career that way. And it was going really well and becoming, you know, uh, established. more established mm -hmm. as a music director in Chicago. Well, then when I got the opportunity to go into the union and do Broadway for the first time, it was like. Nothing I did mattered. They don't care about non -ec. They didn't care anything about those little house to them, little houses in Chicago. That's not Broadway. So it was like, I'm nothing. You're I'm starting, starting over. over. Yeah. They don't, nobody knows who I am. You know, no one's ever heard of me. They don't get, they don't care. Like everything I've done on my resume is nothing. Might as well be nothing. So that I was like, I have to start over and you have to start over on the networking and do it all from scratch. Yeah. So that's definitely, that can be a con, which is like thinking about your career and being like, am I going to have to, have the mental fortitude to feel like I'm starting over. You will be reset. starting over, especially if you haven't gone to all the equity houses in your region. Those artistic directors and casting directors have not laid eyes on you. Um, some of these artistic directors and casting directors do go to storefront theaters and they do see work in their region, but oftentimes they're very busy and they don't see everything. So they yeah. may not have seen you in the work that you do and what you're capable of. So you have to be willing to... Uh, to risk starting over. And I did feel like when I moved to New York that I was starting over because yeah. um, I was in the Lion King, yes, which is amazing. And it helped me get into some rooms, but no one is going to see the Lion King. None of these casting directors are going to see the Lion King. They've seen it before. They're going to see new shows. Mm -hmm. And that's actually why I made the decision to audition, keep auditioning while I was in the Lion King. And when I got the opportunity to do Kiss Me Kate, I left the Lion King to do it because 
casting directors are going to go see a new show right. or a revival of a show. And so um, I was able to have eyes on me and that has helped me get into more rooms. So you just have to be strategic when you are starting over, even if you're at a certain level where you feel like you shouldn't have to start over. Uh, if people don't know you, they don't know you. And you have to prove yourself no matter what your resume says. Yeah. Just a couple more things um, with cons, I think, and yeah. then we'll be done. But the insurance is is definitely a con. The health insurance. We yeah. talked about this already. We talked about it on Monday. We'll talk about it a little bit more today. But basically the health insurance, you know, you have to work 12 weeks minimum yeah. to qualify for the lowest tier of of insurance. And that getting that 12 weeks can be really difficult sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So and they don't have to be consecutive. You know, it, it's accumulative, but it's within a year. Within you a year. have to work 12 weeks. Practically and, three months. Yeah. Three months in a year can be really tough mm -hmm. sometimes to get work. You know, you're, you're just trying to find something, piece together something just to qualify for health insurance so that you can, you know, uh, so you'll be take right. care of your family or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's that's tough. So that's definitely a con. Also a pro that you have health insurance as opposed to non-union where you don't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. But the way you have to get it can be a con. It's, yeah, it's, definitely. It's so uh, if any uh, union reps are watching this, just know that's how we feel oh, about yeah. that. Well, we know they're working on it, but it's are a mess. Are they? Well, okay. sure. Everybody's complaining about it, but it's a mess. And the last uh, con, which is just an is really, it's not really a con, it's just a part of being in any union anywhere, is that you have union dues and union fees. Uh, there's a, a hefty initiation fee when you join the union, yeah. which they will deduct from your check. But if you're working at a house that doesn't pay you a lot, that's a good portion of your check. I think it's $1,600 now. It'll be $1,700 soon. Mm -hmm. um, they're changing it or it's going up again or something. So I think yeah. it's about $1,700. And you have to pay six hundred dollars of that at application. Yeah. So and then front. you have to finish paying it within a year. There's some policies. It's all complicated. Yeah. So you have that initiation fee is hefty. Yeah. Then you have the annual dues at one seventy six yeah. annually, which is a change that's new. To keep to keep your membership. To keep so every year one hundred and seventy six dollars paid twice a year. Yeah. So you divide that uh, by two. Yeah. And then you have a two and a half percent working due. So anytime you're on a contract, two and a half percent is automatically deducted for your union From working due. Yeah. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, but that's it. That's, you know, really, I, I think our the point we really want to drive home is that when you make the decision to join the union, make sure that it's right for you because there really is no going back. But um, I have no regrets in joining the union. It was a good decision for me. And I think I did it just at the right time. Yeah. Um, just because your union doesn't mean better. No. Uh, just because your non-union doesn't mean worse. Nope. You know, there's, it's just what's right for you and your journey and what you want with your life and what's best for you, what trajectory is best for you. If you have any specific questions about specific to your journey and then you want some advice from us, we're happy to give it to you. Just yeah. uh, do a private message or uh, go on the website. Go on the website, us. hit the co comment and section we'll, there. We'll give you our advice. We can't tell you what's right, but we'll give you some perspective based on our own journey if, if that's something you want. Are you ready for our shout out? Yes. We are so excited to shout out Joseph Elbaz. I don't know how to say the last name, but I think it's Elbaz. We are so grateful to you, Joseph. Joseph, that was so nice. Thank um, you so much for your contribution. Joseph went on our website. Went on our website. Made a huge contribution. And because if you if you want to donate, you can. Austin made a yeah. really cool don donation tab on our website. Joseph made an amazing contribution, bought a t-shirt, joined our subscriber level, which is orchestra, level, orchestra yeah. level, which is amazing. That's our highest tier. And um, so we're so grateful to you for that, for being a fan. And he wrote us a lovely note too. So. Yeah. So thank you, Joseph. Thank you so and much. Thank you to all of you. If you haven't hit that like button, hit the like button and subscribe with the notification bell on so you stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Yes. Uh, do you remember who we're talking to on 32 Bar Cut this week? Uh, yeah, Diana Huey. Diana Huey. She Diana is the Huey. first ever Asian American actress to play The Little Mermaid. So we are sitting down for quite a while with Diana Huey. Um, we had a really great time chatting with her and you'll yeah. be able to check that out tomorrow on 32 Bar Cut, the show. Don't miss it. It's Don't miss spectacular. It. 
All right, well, we'll see you all later. Bye. All right, bye.